Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see how to find the value of NCR efficiently. So as you know NCR is basically N factorial by N minus R factorial into R factorial. So for smaller values of N you can have a function factorial and you can find the answer using that only. But for larger values of N doing that will result into overflow. I recently faced this problem while doing a question on code forces. So in this video, we're going to see a very efficient method of doing this, which will simply make use of the fact that NCR is in the last, it is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 and till n minus r plus 1 multiplicated by, because r factorial will get cancelled by r into r minus 1 all the way till r becomes 1. So we have a product on the numerator, we have a product on the denominator. So at each point before multiplying, we'll keep on simplifying it. We'll find the GCD of n and r and we'll divide the top and the bottom with that. Again. I'll find the GCD of n minus 1 and r minus 1 and I'll divide the top and the bottom with that. I'll find the GCD of n minus 2 and r minus 2 and I'll divide the, new, the numerator and the denominator with that. So I found this method on geeks for geeks and it's really easy and simple. So let's get to it. For the implementation I'll be taking, let's just say LL, I'll be taking this is n and this is r and cr. So I will be taking a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1. So a will be holding my numerator, b will be holding my denominator. Now you should also know that n cr is equal to n c r minus 1. So it's basically the same thing. n c n minus r, my bad. n c n minus r. So n c r is the same thing as n c n minus r. So the, we'll, take, we'll be taking the smaller value of that. So if r is smaller than that, if n minus r is smaller than that. So if n minus r is smaller than r, then we'll have that as r. Now, if r not equal to 0, because if r is equal to 0, as you know, nc0 is simply what? 1. So if r is 0, then p will be our answer, then p is equal to 1 simply. Otherwise, what we'll be doing is we'll go from r, like I showed before, the denominator will have r into r minus 1, r minus 1 into r minus 2, all the way till r becomes 1. So while r is greater than that, what I'll be doing is I'll say p is equal to p into n and a is equal to a is equal to a into n, b is equal to b into r and as I said we'll have a number for the GCD. Let's call it GCD itself, GCD, or let's say GC because we have a function called GCD. So LLG is equal to GCD of A comma B and then as I said we'll divide the top and the bottom by that. So A is equal to A by G, B is equal to B by G and then we'll subtract n and r because it is on the top n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 till n minus r plus 1 and on the bottom r into r minus 1 into r minus 2 till r so n minus minus r minus minus and so this will keep on going till r is equal to 1 and in the end we can just return p which will hold a final answer. Return p. 
So we can check that. Here I'll be only using a smaller number, but you can check it with a large number also to see if it's not overflowing. So say, or let's just say simply C out and CR 5, comma 2. Or let's have a simple thing, 4, comma 2. And line. So what is 4 and 4 C2? It is 4 into 3 by 2. So I hope I didn't make any mistake. Okay, I think it, I think I did. Yeah, my final answer is A, not B. My bad. I just saw the code on, on Geeks for Geeks. And they use P. Yeah. So 6, as I said, 4 into 3 by 2, 6. So this is a very efficient way. And it just uses a simple trick, a basic trick of you know, simplifying the numerator and the denominator using a common factor. Thank you.